Hi everyone, I'm Neil, and today I'm going to show you how you can use MidType to get a SaaS app with recurring payments through Stripe up and running in minutes. So this is the, the screen that you're welcomed with when you onboard with MidType for the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and click next, that's the first question. So now it's asking whether I want to start from scratch or with a template, and I actually would like to use one of MidType's prepared templates. It gives me both a backend and a front-end starter to get going immediately. And so I want actually to Dooley, which is our sample SaaS application, which has billing integrated already. So I'm going to click next. And now I need to, I'm asked for project ID for my application. This project ID is going to be used as part of the endpoint that I'm assigned for my GraphQL API once it's up and running. So just as a sample, I'm going to call it to Dooley uh, demo. Great. Now I'm going to click next and MidType is gonna go ahead and create that for me. So as it's creating it, uh, there are some instructions on how I can use the front end starter once I'm ready. So now MidType has finished creating my API. I'm gonna click finish. So let's walk through this UI just for a second. On the left here, you'll see different sections related to my MidType project. And I'm gonna to go to models very quickly. In the model section, what you'll see is that there are actually a few models already created for me based on the template I selected previously. And so in this case, for the to-do app, there are tasks and there are projects. If I click into task, I'll see the fields related to a task. And these range from simple text fields like summary to Booleans like completed to linked models. So what a linked model allows you to do is actually reference another model within the context of a, of a task. So if a task is related to a given project, I can make that connection here and using a GraphQL query, I can actually retrieve the project that's related to this task immediately from the same query. So now if I click project here, it'll take me to the project model. And you'll see that it's also very similar. It has a few text fields and it actually has a special field related to a user. And this links this project to a specific user. On the left here, you'll see a few other sections related to my project. There's users, which has a list of users registered in my application. Right now there's none except for mid type admin. There's data where I can actually see all of the data that I've saved in table format, the assets that I've uploaded to my project, payments, and we'll get here in just a second. And lastly, there's graphical, which allows you to test out GraphQL queries for your API. It also provides you with documentation about your API. And you can click through here and see the different types of queries that can be made. You'll see here tasks, users, projects. This is correlated to the models that I defined in this model section. So now I actually want to set up payments for my application. So I'm going to go ahead to the payment section. This is where I can connect my Stripe account to my MidType project. So I want to go ahead and do that by clicking the connect with Stripe button. So this takes me to Stripe. And I can pick which project I actually want to connect to Stripe. And in this case, I already have prepared a to do demo Stripe account, which I'm going to connect. This will take me back to MidType. And in MidType, you'll see that my account is now connected. Next, I need to enable subscriptions in my project. And doing so is actually going to trigger a new version of my API, my backend being deployed. So now that that's deployed, it'll take a few minutes for it to actually register that Stripe is enabled. So this could take up to three minutes and it's just a new version of your backend being deployed. Now that it's ready, I'm gonna go ahead and create a product. I'm going to call it hobbyist because this will be my hobbyist tier of services. I can also give my product a slug, which is essentially an identifier just for me in case I wanna reference it somewhere else in my code. So I'll call that hobbyist as well, just lowercase. And I'll click save. So now this is going to create a new product for me. And not only will it create a new product in my project, but it'll also create that product on Stripe, which you can see on your own Stripe dashboard. Next, I can now create a plan that's associated with this product and I can give it a monthly cost. So $10 a month sounds about right. Let's actually make it 12 a little bit more, a dozen. And I'm gonna give this a slug as well. I'll just call it monthly. Monthly hobbyist. Great. So I'm going to, great. 
So now that my back end is ready to go, I can actually move on to my front end. And as I mentioned previously, MidType actually provides me with a front end starter for this application. That means that I can go straight to deploying it. It has everything I need and a few environment variables that I can configure to get it to work with my app. So I can click the fork and deploy on Netlify button. So now I'm here in Netlify and Netlify is already configured to know to ask me for a few environment variables to get up and running. Uh, the first is just a display name for my application. To Dooley sounds about right. I'm going to call it to Dooley demo just to be different. Next is my mid-type project ID. And if you remember, this is the ID I assigned my project earlier in this process. I can actually grab it by going back to mid-type, my mid-type dashboard, clicking on the project section. And here you'll see the API endpoint associated with my project. So my ID is actually just the beginning portion of it. So I'm going to grab that to Dooley demo. And I will put that in Netlify. Next is my uh, login redirect URL. So now the interesting thing is Netlify is going to assign me a URL for my application in just a second. So until I have that URL, I can't actually supply this environment variable, but that's okay. I can fill it in later and then give it, provide it once I know what the URL is. Lastly, I need my Stripe publishable key. So I can grab that from my Stripe dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead to my Stripe dashboard and here in the to demo application, I can go down to my, the developer section. And under that, there is the API keys. And here you can see that they have the publishable key for me. And this is what I'm going to use. Now, one thing to be wary of is to make sure that you are in production mode and that you're not in test mode. You can tell if your token has the word live in it, then you are in production. So grab the, the Stripe publishable key, go back to Netlify, and now I can paste that into here. I can go ahead, save and deploy. And so Netlify is gonna get the process started for downloading all the dependencies for the front end and deploying it. In the meantime, what I can actually do is, is figure out what the redirect URL needs to be for my application. The reason I need a redirect URL is because once one of your users logs in with Google, it, they're sent to MidType and MidType actually redirects them to your front end wherever it is. And so you just need to provide a URL for that front end so we know we're sending it to a safe and secure place. So in this case, my URL is actually defined by Netlify. It's called Competent Kirch. <laughs> so I can go into MidType and now under the project section, you'll see authentication. And this is where I can supply my login redirect URLs. So I'm going to edit it and I'm going to add one here. So the way Netlify URLs work is they are your project name .netlify.com. And now in this case, the way the Todooly app is configured, I need to add slash login to the end. So I can go ahead and click save now. And now I have this login redirect URL saved to my project. I can grab it by clicking the copy button next to the Google sign in URL. And now I can go back to Netlify, go to my site settings, go back down to build and deploy. And under here, you'll see a section called environment variables. And there's already an environment variable here for my React app Google sign-in link. And this is an environment variable that the one that I didn't fill in when setting up my project initially. So now I can go ahead and paste that in that I got from my mid-type dashboard and click save. Great, so now that that environment variable is set, I just need to deploy a new version of my site. So I'm going to go ahead to deploys. I'm going to click trigger deploy and deploy my site. And so now Netlify is going to rebuild my site with the new environment variable and deploy it. This should take about two to three minutes. Awesome. So now my site is deployed and ready to go and live. And so if I go back to my site configuration, my deploys, and I click the link to my site. Wonderful, my version of the to Dooly app hosted on my Netlify domain. And now you can always have your own domain on Netlify just by going to deploy settings, domain management, and specifying the custom domain and pointing your DNS provider to Netlify. That takes about 10 minutes, if probably less to get going.
So now in the Todoli app, you'll see that any user can come here, see your homepage, see your pricing. The pricing is automatically populated by your mid-type API. So my hobbyist plan here for $12 a month that I just created. And now a user can sign up. So I'm going to go ahead and sign up. So I've signed in as myself. And so my picture shows up there from Google. And now I actually need to subscribe to use the product. And this is a, an initial paywall that we've created. So you'll notice here that a user can not just pick a plan, but can also put their credit card information in and insert a coupon code. So you might be wondering, how do coupon codes work? Well, those are actually created in Stripe. So if I go back to my Stripe dashboard here, and now I go to billing, and I go to the coupon section, then I can actually create a new coupon just for myself. And for this demo, I, of course, want to use a free forever coupon. So I'm going to create a new coupon called free forever. And the ID will be free. And it will be a 100% discount forever. So let's go ahead and create that coupon. Awesome. My coupon's been created in Stripe. So now I can grab this ID. And if I go back to Todoi, I can actually sign up as myself. Sorry, we had to blur out this part of the demo so that you don't steal our credit card information. And I can actually put the coupon that I just created into here. So the, the code that I used was free. And I can click subscribe, which will create a subscription for me. Great, so now I'm in the Todoli app. I've been subscribed. I'm a user, an official user, and I can create tasks. Now, if I go back to the mid-type app and I go to users, I should now see that I am a user of this application. And if I go to the payment section, I'll also see that I am a subscriber and I'm on the hobbyist product. And if I click any of these links, then they will, they will take me to the related subscription on Stripe. So you can actually get a lot of analytics about your monthly recurring revenue, your churn and things like that directly from Stripe using their dashboard. So you don't lose any of that functionality at all by using mid-type to create subscriptions. All of the front end code for this has actually already been forked to my own GitHub profile. And so I can go ahead and edit it as I'd like. So if I go into my own GitHub profile, you see sample SaaS app here, which was updated 12 minutes ago. And this, of course, is the Todoli app that I just forked and deployed on Netlify. And all of the source code for the front end, including the front end components for logging in, is all here. And you are more than welcome to edit it to your heart's content to make it whatever you need it to be for your application. And that's it. So good luck. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful and you understand how easy it is to get started on mid-type. Thanks.